If I owed a man, say, to a relevant of the amount of money and I went broke the next day, I would still do my utmost to pay him. I left Bristol in 2015, went up to Leicester Tigers, played seven years there. We went from being 11th to within 18 months winning the league, so it was uh, crazy. It was a good way to finish, yeah. I put the car up on Instagram. The next day I found out I got robbed and I felt sick. The car represented even worse. I was like, oh, I need to get the money back. We walked down this place in Tokyo and all the people are in business suits, like, falling over and there's a job over there to pick people up from the street and <laughs> seriously because they work so hard so relentlessly every single day of the week it's almost like encouraged to you know you, you could be a rugby player but like obviously everyone sort of knows football a lot better being a, a little bit bigger than everyone else they they automatically sort of categorize you into a contact sport back with episode eight of the Brown ups and we got two great guests on today ellis and ty introduce yourselves, guys introduce yourselves i'm ellis <laughs> i'm ty <laughs> i've got shiz and me What's going on? Why don't we start the episode? So, uh, Alex, what do you tell us about yourself? Um, I'm 28. I grew up in Bristol. I've known Thai for 13, 14 years. Uh, I'm a local boy. I'm from Nor West, uh, and I now play rugby. So, Nice. Who do you play rugby for? I play for Bristol. Sick. And Thai? Yeah, my name's um, Tyrone. I'm from Kingsham. Um I run a luxury concierge business selling high end watches and high end fashion. I've knew Alice for the same. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Shiz, you brought these guys in. How do you know? Them? I just know them for a long time. Like, uh, Alice through mutual friends and Ty, what the, I met you through some, probably some business related thing. Probably, right? yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. He got a unit next to someone else who's in a similar business. And I think I just bumped into him like that, basically. But yeah, we got a lot of mutuals. Nice. What you start us off then, Ellis? How how do you get into rugby? How did it start? How do you end up playing for Bristol? Um, <clears throat> just from young age, really, I guess. Being a, a little bit bigger than everyone else, they they automatically sort of categorise you into a contact sport. I tried all martial arts and, and boxing and all that sort of stuff, but that sort of um, reciprocated into into school. So um, my old man was just took me down to rugby club and yeah, I fell into it. Socially, I think it was a good dynamic for me. I was quite a sort of intrinsic kid, a uh, bit of an introvert in terms of quite shy and, and didn't really want to talk to anyone except for the people from from where we're from, from where we grew up. So it was good for me. It made me a bit more socially aware and uh, yeah, mixed that demographic a little bit. Nice, nice. Did, did you always think you were going to make it rugby or were you just like half? Nah, nah. Um, to be honest, I didn't even know you could be a rugby player. Like obviously, everyone sort of knows football a lot better, um, and the salaries don't really uh, aren't that flattering in, in in rugby in comparison to some of the other sports like football, basketball, um, or fighting anything like that. So, um, but it's, it, it sort of skyrocketed after England won the World Cup in two thousand and three um, and became a bit more lucrative. So the awareness definitely grew then, and, and yeah, it sort of took off. And it, it looks after itself in that sense. Everyone always asks the same question: How did you get into rugby? It sort of like gets into you, you know, like it it, it finds you itself and that they sort of like bring you into academies and yeah, the path sort of, it, it carves itself in that sense. Nice. And what other stuff you got going on? Uh, I opened a gym in Leicester. So I left Bristol in 2015, went up to Leicester Tigers, played seven years there, um, captained them to a, to a trophy in 2022. We won the premiership for the first time since 2013, I think. So yeah, it was a good year for me. Oh, wow. Sick. Man. Yeah, no, it was, it was incredible, really. We went from being 11th to within 18 months winning the league. So it was, uh, crazy. It was, it was a good way to finish. Yeah. And during that time, I, I spent the last 18 months sort of setting up a gym and obviously when everyone thought that was it yeah, uh, yeah. for sport in general so I, I spent that sort of six month period when we weren't necessarily playing um, week in week out just sort of thinking what can I do after rugby um, and yeah I set up a gym called Sin with my friend Sam so do you want to plug it? Is it like a website or something? Get um, to be honest, we're we're boutique, so it wouldn't necessarily benefit anyone. Um, so is it like one of the uh, as a PT? So you do PT? No, so boutique in the sense that it's it's an in independent gym. Um, we're not like a, a pure gym where you roll out the same gyms; they all look the same, I guess, unless you go to Knightsbridge and, and places like that when they're a bit more at market. But yeah. Um, yeah, we're, we're very different. We've got some decent aesthetics and, and good lighting in there. I guess that's the market we're trying to crack. Sort of in a budget sector with, with high-end sort of lighting and stuff. is It's going well, man. Sin Leicester. Fair play. 
Light, man. Lighting's important now, isn't it? Because a lot of people go to gym just to take photos. Well, like, exactly. Tie. Like, tie, yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's what we sort of targeted was we thought, where's, where are gyms going? Gyms are always going to be physical, I doubt, for maybe another thousand years until you can put a headset on and actually get physical benefit from... The way AI uh, is coming up. Yeah, that's what I mean. So we'll have to play catch up with that. But our idea was let's make uh, a sort of a, a friendly place for people. We don't really want like a sweater gym. Like time, <laughs> <laughs> nah. But we, we, we want people time. to feel comfortable taking pictures in like nice bathrooms and stuff like that, but for like an affordable price within sort of forty quid. So oh, nice, man. It sounds yeah. cool. No, it's good. It's good. Come up and train. Nice, yeah, yeah, man. Definitely, definitely. Have you seen that gym in London? I think it's like three fifty a month, and you can put your clothes in your uh, locker, and they come back to you washed. Like the next time you come in, it's you mad. Could, if you got money, you could do anything you want in London. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, yeah. anything you want. Ty, how do you get into the luxury? concierge business bro so um i first started selling jordans for i was making like maybe 30 pound profit off a uh, depop on each pair yeah yeah sometimes even like 50 sometimes i'll probably lose sometimes i was getting scammed in that and then just kept selling jordans the further i got down the more um people i met and then i could get them for a lot cheaper in bulk I was buying like started to buy 200 pairs at a time getting them um imported from hong kong well, wow, I started sick. Make, yeah, I started making like a hundred pound a pair in bulk, and I said I could. I I had people buying like ten pairs at a time. Mad. So yeah, and then now I sell like Louis Vuitton discontinued pieces, watches, um, high end buggies, cars, and yeah. That's <laughs> any, it, bro. I gotta be connected any, with you after. Any, anything? <laughs> Not anything, but yeah. Yeah, man, I gotta be connected with you after. Right? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Buy some stuff. I haven't sourced a Lamborghini yet. <laughs> we we had a similar thing where we got scammed on eBay. You got scammed on eBay back in the day, didn't you? Hard. Yeah, I got scammed for three hundred and forty quid. It was three sixty-three tens. Or it was it an eighty-three ten? And then uh, I'm a 640 pound, actual yeah, pound. I yeah. borrowed it off my old man yeah. to buy three phones, and those phones were gonna sell for double. And I was like, why is it so cheap to the guy? He goes, ask his bulk. But bulk for three phones. Yeah, That's when, when you're yeah. And I was there like 13 years old. Like, yeah, yeah, I got it. Anyway, <laughs> it took me three years to pay that 640 quick back to my old man. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. No, no, no. So I didn't tell like I had two years maybe, but it was chewing gum. It took so long. It was like, this was going to be the biggest line. I was going to get like a few hundred quid off of these phones. That all went kaput. And then I had to spend all this time just like a few quid here. I paid 640 pound back in pound coins and 50 piece. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> but going through that through your adolescence is probably one of the biggest um lessons you've ever learned yeah yeah for sure have you ever you ever taken any l's like that where it's like you you found the win and then it all gets taken away from you you lost your supply chain and yeah there's plenty of times of greed and being being naive well for me anyway i can't really speak on someone else's um mistakes or... yeah we were saying this isn't it it's the yeah, greed we it's the greed isn't it when you when you start see seeing money it. like that's in it. your eyes you're, that's it you're yeah, every, gone. everything else is irrelevant <clears throat> Yeah, because we all did similar things. Like I used to sell like Visu jeans at school. Obviously, same thing from China, whatever. And you were selling like Tiffany as well, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tiffany and Co. And that was all on eBay. And you could kill it on eBay back in the day, just yeah, buying yeah, stuff yeah. and selling it. But then you get scammed by one person and it eats yeah. the profit from like 100 yeah, sales. Right. It's heartbreaking. So you're still big at <laughs> Jordans then? Is Jordan still the, the trainer? I still sell Jordans, but the the niche is not the same anymore everyone's every a lot of people even young kids have started to resell so it's not as big now it's more like Louis Vuitton Dior Celine yeah high-end companies it must be interesting dealing with the kind of people you're going to sell that stuff to like <laughs> yeah yeah I mean you it, get all walks of life right yeah it is it is it is a 24-hour job though like the thing I sent Shiz the other day the equ- have an equilibrium with it it's like it is hard to do I have people contacting me one in the morning i need a bag i need a t-shirt like some things aren't manageable but yeah when when there's a will there is a way so i will always try my best to achieve that do you ever worry that your business is like cruxed on um on that supply i always think with mine that if if certain things stop then i'm screwed do you ever do that yeah i think that every day i got i got amex credit cards and i'm thinking if this happens and this uh, but yeah like one day i can have loads of money in a bank the next thing i'm 40k in debt like (laughs) it happens quickly within a blink of an eye yeah man that's That's half the fun like it keeps you on your toes isn't it yeah because when you when stuff like that doesn't happen like bad things don't happen you get lazy you get complacent and you know what happened to me like last year i lost money and it makes you get back into gear and make more in it but before that i was comfy i was cruising everything's going right 
And then when you lose it, it gets your hunger back. You know? Yeah, no, it's, I agree with that. I do agree with that. For sure, the worst L's, I think you look back on them and you wear them as a badge of honour once you got out of it. Yeah, yeah. At the time, it's the worst thing in life. Oh, though. Man, yeah. I sleep for it. days on end. I can't even leave my bed enough. <laughs> and they hurt me. Those tests are savage. You must have had some tests, Ellis, going through, like when you think, like, oh, my career, this is happening, or even with like, your business that you've opened, have, have you had things where you think, like, oh, this is going to happen, it doesn't, and things get taken away? Um, <clears throat> not quite to the extent, I guess, you do it in buying and selling. Um, the membership sort of set up with, with the gym that we opened up in Leicester, we sort of got promised um, a lot of corporate membership, and it was all done sort of verbally and on, on handshakes and... and, and I guess just just hearsay uh, and it didn't come to fruition so it sort of stung us in the first few months we lost a bit of money in terms of memberships because we didn't didn't hit where we need to be um but yeah like you said in, in future everything's going to be in in ink and on on paper for me so I guess I learned a lot from that very very quickly yeah you learn it it's like every single bad thing that goes wrong you carry PTSD from it so it don't happen again doesn't it yeah, yeah, yeah that's great that's, that's a good way you need like PTSD in each area so you don't keep doing the same thing you know yeah yeah like it's even like if you're dating someone and then she acts as you like a PTSD like you know that uh, I can tell she's on the way out so you just know how to behave and it comes down to even when you're dealing with a supplier you know that uh, this is this stinks this is dodgy bro I got burned bad last time a supplier yeah, was yeah, doing this right but at the same time it, it makes you proc- uh, procrastinate on a lot of deals. Like I've lost out on a lot of deals from previous mistakes, but it's better to be safe than sorry with it. Cause... Shiz was saying this actually about it's people who get defeated in the end because it's there's a healthy amount to carry, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people just totally give up. They take a couple of L's or something doesn't work out for them, and they just go into like a normal life, just living a normal life, and just carrying on, and they just become like a normal person, and they're not interested in doing no business or taking no risks. And I see, I've seen that happen to a lot of people when they've just, you know what I mean? Like, you can't give up. No. Yeah, yeah, of course. Like, even with that crypto thing, like we're saying, like, I could, I've lost money on loads of them, like, here and there, but I could have yeah. become, like, adverse to risk and not put money in, then I wouldn't have made the big win to make back for the losses. You, know? no, you can't, just, can't just give up because you've taken a couple of losses, you know? No, of course. Yeah. What's going on? What, what would I, you say is the worst for you when in terms of, like, where you've maybe been overcautious and lost something? You ever had that happen? Yeah, because so I had, I had this one recently. I don't know. I was talking about it a couple of weeks ago, saying um, we had some guy, some ex banker from America, checked him out. He worked for like Merrill Lynch. He's like a director, and he wanted to offload like I don't know, like something crazy, like fifty k in BTC or something, like fifty thousand Bitcoin, not fifty thousand pound. Wow. And um, he wanted us to make the deal for him, and and the cut was like three percent, and he wanted to sell it in. I don't know. I can't remember what it was like two and a half mil lots. So there's like hundred fifty k to be made on each one, but like something wasn't adding up. And obviously, we didn't want to get someone we knew. So we were trying to get like an exchange or someone to make the deal to take to mitigate the risk. And they kept asking for more stuff. And we're like, this sounds off. And they'd be like, just try us, just try us. And then in the end, we're like, if these guys ain't going to do it, we ain't going to put our money online because, you know, it's not worth the risk. Like, I'm not going to end up owing someone two and a half mil, you know, for, for something I was going to make 3% on. Yeah, so yeah. Sometimes you just have to let it go. It's not worth the risk. And, and sometimes, especially when your back's really against the wall, I start to try and rationalize why it could be worth the risk like maybe this is maybe maybe that like thing that didn't quite add up is legitimate you know because yeah. they try to explain why the little inconsistency in their story don't work out and then you start to like ah, maybe he's not a crook you justify like the red flags yeah because of your greed because you want the money like i was telling my other guys working with me like oh, it should be fine it should be fine but in my head i'm thinking like this is a massive red flag but like as long as i'm not taking the risk it's cool if we get these other guys to sign the paper yeah 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 <laughs> But that's not what happened with the turkey thing, wasn't it? Like, we ordered the gloves, and they turned up short, and then we paid again, and they didn't turn up, and he's making excuses. And they kind of seemed legit excuses, but in the end, it just ended up... Yeah. This is a, a mad loss. Like It was crazy. Mad. So right when PPE was kicking off, I I had, like, our business accounts set up, and, like, work that I'd worked my ass off for years and years and years, like, building up this money. And then the opportunity came where you can make a fortune from gloves, and I'm talking, like... You could have done single deals, just make 30 grand here. And as many gloves as you could sell, the deals were there. So not only have I got this supplier in Turkey who is charging like £7 a box and I was charging like £8.50, he's got endless supply. I bought a 1,000 boxes. They all come fine. And then next, I order more, 10,000. And I start to run before I can walk because I just think, shit, this guy's delivering. And I got all these orders up my ass. So anyway, $272,000 later, I send it over to turkey in bits because i kept getting tracking for parts and i was like ah just screw it i can already see that like that ten thousand boxes is nearly here but it wasn't yeah, it was yeah. like ghost tracking numbers so in the end i've got all these customer monies who have paid me up front two hundred seventy two thousand dollars in a hole to some guy who goes mia in turkey 
Yeah, that's and crazy. I nearly nearly bankrupt, man. It was like by a skin of my teeth, two months. Yeah, that that seems crazy. You talking about gloves, that, like actual pairs yeah, of gloves, like disposables, yeah. like vinyls, oh, okay, whatever. Okay. They were going mad. They were like liquid gold. They went from being like a pound a box to eight pound fifty overnight when COVID hit. Yeah, that's wow. Mad. Yeah, because I remember you ringing me every day because I found the uh, supplier somewhere. I can't remember where I found it from website. And I, you rang me like, we've done this many sales. When this comes through, you 40K. And like next day, it'll be like 60K. And then, yeah, it was and, mad. And suddenly overnight, like nothing's turned up and it's just gone full reverse. Bruh, I worked out. It was going to be the first month I was ever going to make a million pound a month. And I went from making a million pound a month to 300,000 pound in debt. Yeah, and I was like, I remember being on my sofa and I was like running the numbers. Like, on my, I was like, Right, this person's been, I was like, oh, nah, I'm 300 in a hole and I haven't got, I can't even get the money together. And it took two months to try and like sell stuff I had and got it together and we got out of the hole, luckily. But the caveat to it all, right, is I had a plane load of PPE or so say I had a plane load of PPE coming over and I bought that car there, the gold wing. And I remember I loaned money to get the car and I said like, right, yeah, this car is symbolic of the plane load coming over and that plane is paying for that car and it's like the wings. And then I put the car, the car up on Instagram. The next day I found out I got robbed. And I felt sick. The car represented even worse. I was like, oh, I need to get the money back for the car. I was like, I'm screwed, bro. And I was thinking like the fact that now it was wings and it reminded me of the PPE. I didn't even want the thing, you know? I didn't even want to see it. Yeah. Like major (laughs) buyer's remorse. I hate buyer's remorse. You ever looked at something that you bought and then you need the money and you're looking at it like, why did I buy that? Yeah, Yeah. I've done that a few times. That happened to me the other day. I I literally feel (laughs) sweaty thinking about it. Like the way I feel. I'm sweating for you. I was in a meeting when I found out I got a text (laughs) and it was my supplier texting me because we need to speak about our friend in Turkey and I knew straight away that we'd been robbed, you know? And I was like, yo, I got to get out of the meeting and I'm just walking and I felt like pins and needles in my forehead. I'm like, bruh. About to pass out. And I literally had people Oh, yo, it was a PPE definitely arriving today. Definitely arriving today. Yeah, I was like, definitely. And I had like, not only did I have a load of debt, I had a load of people like going like, I need this PPE. I got customers who need it. Who, then, who, who was the sub, uh, PPE being supplied for? It was being supplied for everyone. A lot of like corporates. Like, everyone of, needed it. Yeah. Didn't, remember the, remember yeah. the first box which landed? You had some like Turkish guy pull up in like a G63 to collect the gloves. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. he somehow helped you get some of the money back. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you crazy. knew someone in Turkey you managed to get 20 grand back. Yeah, that's crazy. Some random guy from London. Club, but where, where, where was the rest of the money, though? Why could he only get 20 he grand back? He got a mil- Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what happened with the money. In the end, I just thought 20 grand is... Yeah, it's better than nothing. Of course nothing. it is. But he got away with a mil and a half, this guy. Yeah, that's Some mad. guy got knocked for half a mil. Crazy. Three years later, he was still like, I'm going to court. I'm getting this. You know he's not getting anything. He's just fighting a lost yeah, battle. Yeah, yeah, of course. you got to make peace with this shit. Or give nah, me- you do, you do. Yeah, right it was that. it was weird, yeah, because I was on Facetime to him, and I was like, "Oh, by the way, I need to send you more money, but I need your ID." And the guy is waving around his driving license on Facetime to me, like, like it's normal, like he's not scamming us. Took a screenshot; it's his real name, real driving license, real address, everything in it. Yeah, yeah. It's like he didn't plan to scam, but he kind of just like you know just kept taking money off people. But then, yeah, it's yeah. weird, wasn't it? Yeah, man, it was like crazy. the world's stupidest scammer, but. Yeah. You probably did a year in jail and you come out to a million quid in Turkey. So it's crazy. It's made for life. What about you, Ty? How do you make peace with us? How do you make peace with the loss? Um, I'm probably the worst person I ask when it comes to stuff like that. I let stuff like that eat me up for years on end. Yeah. But at, by, near the end of it, that I can't say things like that happen twice. Like once it happens once, that's it. I, if something happens like that again, yeah, I'm definitely in the wrong trade or my head's definitely not in the right place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yes. what happens if it's something that's like, it's nothing to do with anyone being a prick. It's nothing to do with anyone like wronging you. It's just something out of control, you know, uh, like stock got lost or. Yeah. When it's things like that, I don't really, I don't even take it as a loss. It's part of, it's part of business, isn't it? Like you can, you can put 10,000 pounds on ads a month and yeah. really no one knows you're going to get sales. You're just gambling the price per click. Your, your, your name's getting more publicly put out there either way. Like it adds as it is like gambling to an extent. Yeah, yeah. But the thing, when it's people like, it involves people around me or like in hindsight, looking back at it. So you be, so you're saying like, so like when it, when it involves people around me, usually like if someone's gave you a warning, oh yeah, you shouldn't be doing business with that person. Then yeah, that's your own fault. You can't like, so everyone's like, oh, well, I would, well, why don't we go to the, the, or find this person or huh. why don't we, you try ri- what, ring whoever to get it sorted. But in, in the reality of it, it's your own fault. You yeah, shouldn't yeah, have been exactly. doing business or doing anything with these kind of people. And I think it's like when you do something that it could be anything, when you know you shouldn't have done it, that beats you up. Like yeah, it could be over it small money and it can just annoy the shit out of you nah, because you know you shouldn't have done yeah, it. 
course. That's but, annoying, isn't it? When someone wants to like say you're out, out yeah, someone wants to ask, can I borrow five pound? Yeah, like, yeah. Give, I'll give you five pound. But if yeah, I borrow yeah. it to you and you don't give it back to me, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna like hate you in my head. Yeah, nah, you know of course. I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's not, yeah. Uh, you have family ask you for money, or can I borrow it? But you really, you know, they're asking to keep it. Yeah, and then, yeah. And then each week you try to ring them, they're avoiding you. Can't see you don't see them for weeks. So <laughs> yeah, if, if someone asks to borrow five, but five is the worst kind because I. A tenner is my limit, you know. A tenner, I'll lend a tenner and I'll, I won't be embarrassed to say, yo, yo, where's that tenner you owe me? That fiver, I feel a bit like, a, <laughs> yeah. a, so I don't even want to give a fiver. Yeah, like, yo, I'll buy course. you your McDonald's or borrow 20 quid, bro, because I'm yeah, not going to be asking. And that's, so I start hating someone because they owe me a fiver and they haven't offered it up. Yeah, I start looking like, bro, you disrespectful <laughs> POS. Yeah, it's just like the ethical, isn't it? Like, if you borrow money, pay yeah, it yeah. back without me asking for it. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. What I mean, because and what if you ask for it, I'll give it to you. You know what I mean? Like you said, your family, if they want to borrow it to keep it, just say, can I, I'm struggling, can mm. I have a one Like, you know, normal. Yeah, of course. Cool. A, a lot of people in this day and age, though, if something goes wrong, they don't want to pay other people. Like, they, they're they not paying out their own pocket. And, yeah, and yeah. No, one, no one got, uh, no one any got, no one got any morals nowadays. Like, people, if someone's forgot about money and they owe money, they, it's a year down the line in their head then they don't own money anymore they're not no. like I, i've had this with family i've let family borrow money i'd say like the same to them can i get my money back it's like yeah the, i ain't got no money next thing they're buying cars and that mad. Like, it's mad have you seen that people borrow money as well it's new age me and shiz were talking about this that people start to justify a narrative like yeah, yeah why they got a reason got this, and, yeah but he had this or yeah but he already has that, like yeah, that percentage mad. of the business like bro we shook on a deal you said you paid yeah, back and now you're changing a narrative to justify yeah, robbing that's me crazy it's yeah, it is that it's like a tenor thing, like, oh, why do you need a tenor? You got this car, like, what do you mean? Yeah, no, it's, it's the principle, isn't it? The principle no, of every, everything. Yeah, someone, yeah. like, you can give someone money, and then because you ask for it back, they'll be telling their friends, oh, I, I'm not giving it, I'm not giving him his money back because he, he's being rude to me. What, yeah. You owe me money. It's irrelevant how I speak to you. I shouldn't even have You to owe ask. me money. Yeah, you owe me money. Like, it's, it's irrelevant if... If anything happened, it's irrelevant if I won a billion pounds the next day. You owe me money. Like, I think no... that's like, I think what I've seen definitely a twist and turn over the years in terms of owing people money or buying shit that you can't afford is like social media sort of corrupt people to think as long as I'm good in that social media bubble and people think I've got yeah, money or uh, as long as I can put something on Instagram so people think I've got dough. Oh, <clears throat> like when I was, I was in the academy in Bristol, I was earning like seven grand a year. Do you know what I mean? And I'm yeah, yeah. with like Ty and all these boys and they all got dough and I'm like, fuck sake, like I'm in the wrong wrong line of work. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. being honest, <laughs> yeah, yeah. being honest, like it's where I'm from. Yeah. I love like, what I should be doing or what these lot are doing and then waited my time. Do you know what I mean? Now I'm earning good dough. So like I, I feel blessed in that sense. But at the time you wouldn't ever catch me and Ty told me if I'm wrong, I'd never live without means. I had an O3 Nissan Micro for my straight. first motor. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you had I, the same I, barber coat for about I mean? 10 yeah. years. I had the same jacket. I'm not, I'm not that <laughs> no, person. I ain't that straight. guy that feels like I got a, nah, I got a stand up and, and, and be counted for on social media. Like, do you know what I mean? I, I, I like people to go about their <clears> business quietly <throat> yeah. and then people respect them for that way as opposed to people who flaunt it and then really like they're not happy. They ain't got anything. Yeah. Of course. It's a better way to be in it. Like, if you've got man. both, then good for you. Do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think, like, the minute it stops, so if you show off, you show off, and that's fine. Like, I show off a lot, but I think the minute you stop, you got to be able to turn it off and understand that finance ain't there or someone else's personal savings ain't there to finance so you can flex, you know? No, you're right. You see, you say this, so you can go. The craziest thing is now, like, I, I sell drip or whatever you want to call it, fashion. You can go into a nightclub in Bristol. You couldn't separate a man that makes five hundred pound from a man that makes thirty grand a week. Yeah, this is weekly payments. Literally. Like they got the same Rolex on, they got the same Louis Vuitton t-shirts on, they got the same jeans, they got Dior's on, and you wouldn't. They got the same cars as well. Like it's, it's mad, crazy. It? It, it, I was speaking yeah. to my friend outside my work earlier, and he's like, "Listen, I just." I don't understand how people even got these things. Like I struggle. I don't get it. I don't it's get mad, it. isn't it? Yeah. Like I like some weeks. Like I, on the like on. I don't want to talk how much money, but like some weeks I make very good money, like five figures profit. But like I even struggle. Like I like I got people I got to give money to, and I'm thinking how like my money's tied up. How the hell does someone make three hundred pound a week? Got Dior's. Got, got the new BMW. Yeah. Got, it's, Bro, I'm the same. I'm the same. I make a lot of money, and I think how the. 
how the hell are you living that way? It's mad, I, I isn't think it? a lot, and I think it's a lot. You Trust know? me, if I go out to eat food, like I go out once a week to eat food. If I go out every day, I think, whoa, like I got mates that gone out twice or three times a day, and I'm thinking, how, I don't know how you do it. To be yeah. fair, I draw the line at that. I, I spend a bit of dough on food. Yeah, so, yeah I, I like good grub. <laughs> yeah, but every, everyone got to have something they enjoy doing. Yeah, like that's their niche, but, yeah. isn't it? That, that's my. You thing. know what I though? Like if you're gonna put money into anything, put it into your body. You know yeah, what I mean? Like, what else? What else that matters? Like the Dior's or whatever you're wearing. Like what do they do for you? Nothing. Nothing. Like it's to impress other people. But at least nah, good course. food goes into you. So, you know I mean? like, some people like buying, like I don't buy a lot of fashion. I do wear fashion, don't get me wrong. Everything I buy and wear, it sells more. But I pull, I draw the line under it. Like it don't make me personally feel better. I like collecting certain products, certain... But you've been on like that since you was 14. Yeah, yeah. I mean? but it's like not I, something yeah, that's it's happened something since... New, like, you, you was like that before Instagram was yeah, even yeah, about Yeah, that's really. what I mean. Now you've got like people that, yes, yeah, it's crazy. I'm just... <laughs> I can't even speak on it. It's mad. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're going to talk about the customers. But we were saying the other day, in it, like you wouldn't care if you was in a Primark tracksuit, but you got people who will not leave the house Unless the designer had to tow, even if they Not don't have course. a penny to their name, like we don't even see what goes on behind the scenes. Like these people could be like thirty grand in debt. They owe this guy yeah. money. They owe that guy money. We don't see it, and they're just spending it all on clothes. No, but as long as they look good on Instagram, yeah, yeah. Right. Crazy. Their I just trips... find it wild. Everyone's back <laughs> to front, crazy. and they. Yeah, it's gonna but, something's gonna give soon. Well, it's yeah, gone. It's, saying it's, that it's wrong, happened. Uh, uh, Money's on his ass. Yeah, he's the everyone's best ass because he's been selling mad drip all through. So yeah, now last year, like last year. My turnover is probably like two, three million pound. This year, like it's gone less, but I'm probably making more money. But to make money now, it's like you have to chase sales. Like before, I I couldn't I couldn't get enough sales. You now I got, you couldn't get enough. Yeah, product, like now, you? like now, I'm still making good money. Don't get me wrong, because I'm still picking up more clients. But like the normal footfall's not there. It's not. It's not the average working person. Like last year, like everyone was just buying everything. I think thinking like people were spending a thousand pound and I don't even know where they, like the, the, the working people and, like once a week, it don't even make sense. Yeah. Everyone had 50 grand in their business never even made a grand every like quarter. Yeah. It's mad. And it's mad as well. Like what you're saying then about the economy coming down and like you have to sell stuff. We were talking about this the other day. It's quite fun though, even when things go downward because it puts you back in the fight, doesn't it? Yeah. Like even I, if it's like yeah. stressful. Yeah, and the people who are sensible and save money for them times. We're going to get the bargains now, yeah? Like, yeah, we ain't course. paying 20 grand over Rolex price. You go no, buy it, and then you can, you can make money. Some in of them you can buy them under retail now. Yeah. Like, like, someone told me they bought a watch from a goldsmith the other day, and they offered it five grand under retail. Seriously? Man, yeah, back. yeah. Like, like, that's how crazy the game's going now. Bro, what? Like, a- assets aren't, unless it's gold, even the a GBP is not an asset anymore. It, nah, it's going nothing, down. Bro, nothing's bro, I, an asset I anymore. I across the suspension bridge earlier. They ain't taking pound coins anymore. They don't want gold. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah, they <laughs> said 23rd of July, yeah, no more pound ta- coins. It's, it's just a, just yeah, cards. Yeah. Yeah. They're getting rid of all of it. You've got to yeah. tap them. Yeah.